Thursday, August 21st, it's morning outside the horticulture building at the New York State Fair, two days before the fair opens. All is calm. But this tranquil scene betrays the activity inside as Morrisville faculty, staff, and students approach their four-month deadline, their premier exhibit at the New York State Fair. Scheduled to arrive in moments are 200 members of the New York State Press to preview the fair and the much-talked-about Morrisville College exhibit. These are the finishing touches, the culmination of over 1,000 man-hours of work that will, in the coming days, thrust Morrisville College into public awareness in a way never before possible. Dr. Butcher welcomes the press, who were to provide extensive coverage of the exhibit. Director Tom Gutches conducts the tour. The exhibit is officially open. Saturday, August 23rd, 10 a.m., the New York State Fair opens. The horticulture building is filled with people. Let's discover the Morrisville College exhibit with opening day fairgoers. The movement, the color, and then the beauty and simplicity beckon spectators to enter, to observe, to participate, to learn, to enjoy. Admissions and alumni situated for easy access with program information and special college and state university literature. Data processing and electronics teamed up to show fairgoers state-of-the-art hardware used on campus every day and share the technology with these future students for whom this field is inevitable. Of particular interest was the computerized presidential preference poll. The following newscast was one of several seen by thousands of Central New Yorkers. Who do the voters in Central New York want for president? Ronald Reagan, according to a Morrisville College poll underway at the State Fair, a poll which has been making national news, not because of its results about Reagan, but for those about independent candidate John Anderson. In the informal poll of nearly 8,000 fairgoers so far, Morrisville's computers register this breakdown in voter choices, numbers which haven't changed since the poll began on Saturday. Reagan leads with 35%, followed by Anderson with 27%, and Carter trailing with 22% of voter support. 16% are undecided. The Anderson results are the highest that candidate has had anywhere in the country. Anderson is leading Carter by a substantial margin, percentage-wise and, percentage and raw vote. We also feel that it's significant that there is a rather high 16% percentage of undecided vote, undecided voters, people who are, are not content with any of the candidates. And while we don't care to make commentary on those results, we find them rather interesting. The pollsters say in some cases those voting for Anderson say they're Kennedy supporters. Others just want to register a protest vote and may change their minds in November. The Anderson tally surprises even his supporters. The most interesting development from this poll has come from the Anderson campaign itself. Anderson has reportedly been asked to make a swing through the fair before it ends, seeing that his support here is apparently strong. Wendy Woods, 9 News at the State Fair. This also is a microcomputer, but it is part of the automotive display. This engine simulator teaches logical problem solving involved with the starting of an automobile. It captivated this young man, and he'll be ready when the time comes. The simulator also captivated an educational delegation from Kenya. They toured the exhibit, but they returned here and spent more time with the equipment. They also inquired about placing students from Kenya in various Morrisville programs. The plastics injection mold machine was a moving and dynamic display. And it also provided, right on the spot, right at the fair, 
15,000 free coasters for the public. Agricultural Engineering shared its expertise in energy conservation with an energy gain, a heat exchanger for the farm, a farm power failure display, and this dynamic cutaway model of a Detroit diesel used in large tractors impressed fairgoers. A variety of other displays showed the diversity of Morrisville's educational mission. And from the Liberal Arts Division comes the message, there can be no technical education without a liberal education. The students in Wood Products offered this cherry table free to a lucky fairgoer. Two members of the Air Force Band performing at the fair were glad that the music instrument repair students were on hand. Our students repaired two of their instruments right on the spot. Morrisville nurses were busy constantly taking blood pressure and counseling. The German band drew large crowds. And area business showed support for Morrisville College. The focal point of the exhibit was the beautiful restaurant managed and operated by faculty and students from Hotel Restaurant and Institutional Food Management. It was described by one fair goer as an oasis where people could relax and eat, surrounded by beauty and pleasant service and cleanliness. 26 students worked 14-hour days without complaint and with pleasant smiles for everyone. In the opposite corner of the building, the horticulture department treated fair goers to unbelievable beauty and a relaxing atmosphere, while at the same time they offered an exhibit that provided educational information for fair goers, and they saw unique varieties of plant material not usually seen. A number of nurseries assisted with this effort, and good relationships were established between the college and business. The arrangements for the semi-formal garden and outdoor wedding were provided by Morrisville alumni and they returned each evening after the fair closed and worked until past midnight to provide new arrangements for the following day. Practical demonstrations enabled Morrisville College, the public college, to share its talent with the public. The exhibit hosted thousands of people, as well as these and other rather special people. I think the overwhelming thing that has been prevalent among all of us here is the fact that we are riding on, a, on an incredible high, as it were. Uh, the experience has uh, been a real ego booster for us personally, for sure. But I think the more important thing is that it has been an, an absolute ego booster for our campus and our college in general. The people who have come through here have had an overwhelming response favorably. To, uh, to the exhibit, its beauty, its simplicity, its effectiveness, but moreover, they've had an overwhelming favorable response to our college. The kinds of comments that people uh, make are, are things like, uh, this must be a wonderful, marvelous college. Certainly, this is a private college, and of course, we dispel that rumor right away. Um, I've had an opportunity to talk to uh, the students, particularly the hotel restaurant students, as they are off shift and on break and exhausted and, and sweating. And, and ask them if, if they think it has been a rewarding experience. And they say, of course, that it has. Uh, I ask them if they see any educational value in it, and they say that, that they have. Uh, they say that uh, while they learn about things in the classroom concerning the management of restaurants, they didn't realize the amount of stocking that it takes in the back room. Uh, the sanitary codes that we have upheld absolutely to the letter. Bob Buzzle confided in me that that he's been on campus for many, many years, and he has never seen a project of any kind, in any scope, of any scope or any magnitude, that has done for our campus 
and moreover has done for our faculty in bringing them together and giving them a sense of pride in this project. The State Fair is now over as we review scenes that the public never saw. But what do we know about the experience? What are the tangible results? Well, we know that 80,000 people visited the exhibit. 16,500 people voted in the presidential poll. A little under 12,000 people ate at our restaurant. 11,000 tickets were filled out for that cherry drop leaf table. 650 alumni registered and many were rediscovered after years of loss of contact. A lot of program literature was taken by people interested in our college. Four television stations, including one in Albany, provided a half dozen newscasts on the exhibit. We were interviewed by six radio stations, including a 45-minute talk show live on WGY in Schenectady. A benefit that we didn't expect occurred when a nationwide wire service, United Press International, as well as NBC's Today Show, provided nationwide coverage of the presidential preference poll and cited Morrisville College. Rumors start popping up that uh, they may move the fair, they may scale down the fair. No way, no way. I think the fair is moving in the right direction. What we need to do, I believe, is to uh, get Bill Hassett, our Commerce Commissioner, to work with Tom Young and let people know about things like the Marsville uh, College exhibit that you won't see anywhere else excepting at the great New York State Fair of Syracuse.